Welcome to another episode of Shooting with Sparky. This is a trip we did a couple years ago and I finally got around to making the video. This ill-fated trip to South Dakota Badlands, Yellowstone, and Teddy Roosevelt National Park. We were going to go to the Grand Tetons, but at the last minute said, ah, let's skip the, the moose and head for Yellowstone. But when I think back on this trip, I think, ah, oh, I just remember, I think, wow, what a bust, you know? I mean, we kicked out of Yellowstone, the park was closed, stuck in whiteouts and blizzards, two-hour backups on the interstate, white-knuckle driving, took us over three days to get home, which should have taken us 16 hours, uh, just crazy. But when I look back at the photos when I was making this video, I'm like, oh, we did pretty well, some cool stuff. Fun prairie dog photos, burrowing owls, a close encounter with the grizzly, bison in the snow, beautiful backlit bison before the snow, mountain bluebirds in the snow. <laughs> There's a theme here. Actually, it was a great trip. Come along and join Ryan and Sparky's adventure on this episode of Shooting with Sparky. Those are a few of my favorites from Badlands National Park. And here are a few of my favorite photos from our 24 hours in South Dakota's Badlands National Park. We had some great light at dusk on that first night and that makes the erosional features and the banding just pop. Of course, we had bison and bighorn sheep and this crazy-eyed bison scratching his belly on a post. Burrowing owls, one of my favorites, but unfortunately this is as far out of the hole as they were willing to come. Usually they were just peeking out of their burrows, but cool owls, they live on insects, migrate south for the winter. And sorry Ryan, but prairie dogs are one of my favorite rodents in all the world, one of my favorite animals, and what could be better than a group back rub? These are some of my favorite photos from the entire trip. Yeah, so let's head out to Yellowstone. And we were in for a pleasant surprise even before we got to Yellowstone. Just outside of Wapiti, Wyoming, we found this grizzly crossing the North Fork of the Shoshone River. We pulled over and waited and sure enough, she came out of the woods and started just feasting on these rose hips. It was so fun watching her. She could care less we were there. But look at those lips. They just can pluck a single rose hip at a time. And hey, high in vitamin C. Way to go, buddy.
Come on, give me a look. Come on. Ryan made lasagna soup with ricotta cheese and Parmesan. These are my favorites from that day. This grizzly plucking rose hips is probably my favorite of the entire trip. And anytime you can get a grizzly to be looking up and not its nose in the dirt feeding is a stellar day. Just as we were getting into the park at sunset, the sky just lit up and we found this red-tailed hawk made for some really nice silhouettes and the sky was just gorgeous orange pink yellow violet pretty cool Ravens in Minnesota are so shy, so spooky, that it's fun in Yellowstone to get up close and personal with these charismatic corvids. We spotted this raucous raven low in a parking area and figured, hey, we could get some backlit breath shots. And that's exactly what we did. Fun. course we had to underexpose by a stop or two and also look for a nice dark background. I just can't pass up a fast flowing stream in the west and Ryan knows this because they might be home to one of the coolest birds around, the American Dipper. What other bird jumps dives into the water and walks on the bottom plucking aquatic insects from the stream floor. Wow, very cool bird. Shake your booty. And it gets its name Dipper from how it dips its hind end. Maybe also from the fact it dips into the water. I don't know.
It was at this point that the trip took a decided turn to the white side. Day four or five of our Yellowstone trip and it is snowing like crazy. We woke up to about an inch of snow. We're supposed to get maybe six to eight inches. And uh, yeah, you like my hair? About 25 degrees. We're gonna go try, you know, we don't, this doesn't stop us. We had our grits and our bagels and we're off to find some critters. Your tent didn't collapse. Oh. Neither did mine. Doesn't look too good, but. It was at this point that the rangers came by and gave us a choice. Either sit at your campsite for who knows, days, or get out of the park. All the roads are closed in Yellowstone, and so it's a bummer. So we're losing a full day of shooting in Yellowstone, but we're gonna try and head out and make it to Teddy and get a little more shooting in, in Teddy. Yeah. Stinks. But what we encountered just outside the park did not bode well for a long journey home across Montana and North Dakota back to Minnesota. Still on the road. Woo! Winning. First down. And to add insult to injury, we got stuck in this two-hour traffic jam on the interstate. Hardly moved at all. Ugh. But we came to shoot, and we weren't going to let a little snow get in our way. And Teddy never disappoints.
can't have two coyotes and a badger. Well, does lightning strike twice? We're in the same exact valley where we had a badger and coyote hunting together a few springs ago and uh, in Teddy Roosevelt National Park. And here we are again, this time in October, uh, early, well, about the 10th of October dusk and we thought we had three coyotes but it turned out Ryan said one's a badger and it was one badger and two coyotes and they are again hunting together well the badger just took off running and uh, we weren't sure what he was doing well he must have seen a prairie dog pop out of his hole because he started digging down and disappeared and the coyotes are just kind of biding their time again letting the badger do all the work so two coyotes and a badger and indeed same valley where we saw a badger and a coyote cooperatively hunting prairie dogs a few years ago. They're doing the same thing now. Lightning does strike twice. Can you see them? Those horses? Those are horses. Feral. And I wanted to share Ryan's favorite photos with you from the trip. Check them out. And it was at this point that the real nightmare of the trip began. The interstate was blockaded and the visibility was about zero. But we thought, hey, a couple of Minnesota boys, we can drive in snow. Let's just go around the blockade and drive the back roads and rejoin the interstate where it was open. Yeah, right. Good plan, Sparky. Big mistake. We got into some of the worst white knuckle driving I've ever experienced. We took shifts, but Ryan did most of the driving. Thanks, buddy. At some points, the only way we even knew we were on the road is when our tires would hit the rumble strips. Sometimes the car would actually get blown sideways because it was glare ice underneath the snow. And the wind was just howling 40 to 50 miles an hour. We couldn't see anything in front of us. It was pretty darn awful, and there's really no way to describe it. Uh, yeah, stupid us. By some miracle, we made it to Jamestown, North Dakota, and found this motel nearly buried in snow. And remember, this is mid-October. Crazy. Fortunately, we found a hotel that still had a few rooms. There were so many stranded drivers. And we made the best of it. Thank you. 
segment. <laughs>